Um, na tuombe Tunasema ni asante Mungu wetu na baba yetu kwa sababu ya kutuleta pamoja jioni ya leo ili tukaweze kukuabudu na kutafuta uso wako. Ni asante kwa sababu sisi ni wenye dhambi lakini kila wakati Bwana tukija mbele zako watuosha na damu takatifu ya mwanao Yesu Kristo watuosha dhambi zetu nasi tunakuwa safi mbele zako na ndiposa wakati huu Mungu wa ajabu tunataka kujiachilia mkononi mwako tuomba kuoshwa upya tukakubariki na damu takatifu ya mwanao ili sasa tunapoketi na kulisikia neno lako likaweze kupata pahari mioni mwetu chukua atamu na utawale kikao hiki maana tumekuomba kwa imani katika jina la Kristo mwokozi wetu amina a praise be to the Lord. Amen. I want to take this opportunity once again and thank God for each one of you, the you that are in this sanctuary and the many, many other people that are watching us from far and wide. We want to welcome you to our midweek service today and we want to thank God for you that you found time to be with us and those of us that are watching us over our different platforms. May the Rock of Ages continue blessing you and caring for each one of you. My name is Outfax Mawera Kiremi. I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I am delighted to be in the presence of God. Today's word, we are getting it directly or literally uh, from the scripture that was read, uh, First Peter chapter one, in verse number 13, part B. And I want to read it. Part B says, Set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. And therefore, our message today is setting your hope in God's grace or setting your hope on God's grace. And we want to understand something, uh, something that Paul is emphasizing, that we cannot receive the grace not unless we are holy. No, we cannot receive this grace not unless we have hope. We cannot receive this grace not unless if we remain obedient and do not conform to the desires of the evil nature. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot receive this grace if we continue judging each other or practice what we call impartiality. So in order for us to receive this grace today, we need to be holy men and women, and therefore this is why our topic today is on setting your hope in God's grace. Because we understand God's grace um, brings forth the blessings. As I was thinking about God's grace, I was asking myself, what is this that we are calling God's grace that we put our hope into it and therefore we receive blessings? And I am reminded that what we call God's grace is that which we call sovereign favor. It is that care that God gives to people that do not deserve it. It is God looking kindly on somebody. And God's, God's uh, grace is also the unconditional love, unconditional love that a person uh, is given by God, much as he did not deserve. So do not forget sovereign, uh, sovereign favor. Don't forget God's care. And don't forget God's rescue. Don't forget God looking kindly on people that may not really deserve it and the unconditional love for um, people that wait upon God. Much as they may not deserve, God can decide to give the unconditional love to people that he chooses. And therefore, in order for you and me now to keep our hope, and to maintain the grace that we are talking about this evening, 
what do what can take away God's favor away from my life? What can take away that unconditional love? What can take away that sovereign favor away from me? And as per the scripture that we, we read today, we understand one of the major issues that can take away the grace, the unconditional favor, the unconditional love is walking in the flesh. Because we are being told that we should not walk in the flesh. Because when we walk in the flesh, we will practice impartiality. And we will live to, uh, we will live to please the desires of our nature. And therefore, according to Galatians now, chapter 5 and verse 6, Paul now says, walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the desires of your sinful nature. Walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the desires of your sinful nature. So as you keep your hope in the Lord, you need to take care of not walking in the flesh because it will take away God's grace. Another thing is unbelief. And you see, when we read Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter number 3, verse 12, down to verse 13, we understand this simple thing, that whenever we practice unbelief, we actually, literally, chase away the grace of God away from our lives. So, let us practice faith and believe in the Lord. Because once we practice and believe, God's grace, God's uh, love, God's unconditional love, God's unconditional uh, sovereign favor walks away from us. So receive and keep the grace of God by believing in the promises of God. Another issue that the Bible clearly wants us against uh, so that we can receive God's grace as per First Peter chapter 1, verse 13 down to verse uh, 21 is this negative speech. And if you read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 down to verse number 30, you will see the Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth because it annoys God. And once God is annoyed with you or me, then the, we forget about the grace. So negative speech of whatever nature uh, takes away the grace of God. And therefore, the ange, do not, do not participate in corrupt communication. Those bitter ones, those corrupt speech, that negative speech of whatever nature. Another thing that can take away God's grace away from your life According now to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 15 is what we call bitterness. Many brothers and sisters live in bitterness. Many, many, many of us are bitter everybody, every day. Simply bitter because of somebody, bitter because of a situation, uh, bitter because of a problem, bitter because of a business that is not uh, bringing forth the fruits, and uh, the Bible records that any bit of bitterness, don't forget this, any bit of bitterness, now that is Hebrews 12, 15, any bit of bitterness springs up trouble for you because it defiles you. And what do I want to mean? That bitterness in me, bitterness in you, according to Hebrews 12, 15, defiles you as a person. And therefore, any bit of bitterness will, will bring forth what we call trouble. And that when trouble knocks your door, that means the grace of God is not with you. And therefore, what happens when now the grace of God is taken away from me? What happens when the grace of God is taken away from me? And I need to uh, make all of us understand they are, you are bound to be a failure. You are bound to be a failure when God's grace is, taking, is taken 
away. And that's, that, this is why now the urge that you set your hope on God's grace. When there is no grace, you are bound to fail. And what do I want to say? That uh, the success, the power, the authority, the sovereignty of God is all taken away when God is not with us. I want to say this, remembering what God did to the children of Israel. Whenever God was with them, there was success, there was power, there was authority. The sovereign power of God was manifested. When God was annoyed with them and they decided not to continue giving them the grace, they always lost battles, there was no success, they looked feeble, they were very weak, and they could not sustain their, uh, the pressure from their enemies. So if you today lose the grace of God in your life, out of any of the four uh, issues that we have mentioned, don't expect to be a successful man. Don't expect to have power. You, should, you cannot have authority. So take care and have hope and keep your hope on God's grace and sustain that grace. Number two that I remind myself is what we call God's silence. God can decide to keep quiet, not talk, not answer your prayer, not talk to you, because God is known to have a person, uh, gone to person communication. So we serve a God who is ever present in our lives. We serve a God who knows everything. And God can decide to give silence. Don't forget, when Saul, when Saul uh, sinned against God, there was a dead silence. God, God is never present when we sin. And therefore, God can decide to keep quiet. You pray, nothing is happening. You fast, nothing is happening. You sin, nothing is happening. So may God's grace be sustained by we through obedience and holiness. Another issue, second to the last, that I want to mention today is what we call calamity, problems, dangers surround you. And I want to quote specifically here the man, the priest of God called Eli or Eli. So when Eli, uh, when, the, when he could not uh, take away the sin from his sons, and the sons continued and sinned on the altar, Eli personally and to die. He never sinned, but he had to die. Eli, Eli's sons died. Eli's daughters, that is daughters-in-law, all died. And they all died at the childbirth. Because the grace of God was no longer with them. So calamity, danger, will surround you when God's grace is taken away uh, from, uh, from you. Finally, when God's grace is taken away from you, you experience what we call shame. And when shame comes your way, then you are left naked. Think about this issue about the man of God, Samson. Samson was staged naked in front of thousands of people, simply because he did not obey what he was to do as a Nazarite, that no hair was supposed to be cut from his head. But the moment he hinted to the tricks of his wife, then God's grace went away and the man was left to experience what we call shame. So defeat and the shame will come your way when God's, a, when God's grace is taken away. And therefore, the ones are very clear from the scripture that we have read today, that we set our hope on God's grace, that we sustain the grace of God, that we take care of that which can take away the grace of God from our lives, so that we can experience that sovereign favor, so that we can experience what we are calling the unconditional love and the unconditional care 
and we can be rescued when danger surrounds us. So my brothers and sisters in the Lord, so that you don't experience defeat, shame, and all that we have mentioned, and desire not to walk in the flesh, desire to have faith and believe in the promises of God, desire not to participate in negative speech of whatever nature, and the desire to take away any bitterness in your heart. You will live under the grace, and the grace of God will propel you to greater heights of success. So may God give you success, and may God's grace rest upon you. May you enjoy the power of God, the sovereign God, simply because of his grace. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we can all say amen as we rise and pray together. Let us pray. Let us pray. I want to give you a moment. Pray for yourself. And remember yourself today, this evening. Ask God never, never, never to allow His grace to walk out of your life. Because you can experience shame. You can experience defeat. And do not allow yourself Desire never to walk in the flesh. Desire not to have any bitterness in your heart. Desire, desire, desire not to harbor any bitterness. Desire to walk under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, guided by obedience and the Spirit of the Lord. My God and my Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to glorify your holy name. We want to honor you because of whom you are. We thank you, Jesus, because many times you rescued the children of Israel by your sheer grace. We want to thank you because you chose Saul by your sheer grace. We want to thank you because even in the case of Eli, you made him a priest and a successful priest by your own grace. We thank you because of Samson. He was a conqueror and killed many people by your grace. But many times, oh God, we understand all these men, all these people that received your grace at one point or another, the grace went away. And this is what happens to us in this life at a time like now. And today we want to pray in the mighty name of your son Jesus Christ that anything that can take away your grace, I will pray that in Jesus' name that it will not come to torment your people, them that are hearing us today. Allow your people now never to walk in the flesh. Allow your people not to participate in negative speeches. Allow your people to have faith and never walk in the valley of, the, of unbelief. Allow your people not to have bitterness and to live in bitterness. Because today we have understood that they normally take away your grace away from your people. We surrender. We surrender our situations. We want to believe in you. We want to surrender our problems because we want to walk guided by the Holy Spirit. We surrender the situations of many that are going to be sick before your evil presence. May your grace touch them wherever they are. May your grace surround many that are in problems, and may you redeem your people and rescue your people. May you give them that unconditional love that they can enjoy the grace of the Lord. And now, may the grace of God, the grace that surpasses your understanding, walk with you and guide you. May you conquer. May you win battles. May you be 
waisa by this grace. Never to walk in the flesh, never to walk in bitterness, never to participate in negative speeches, so that the grace can be sustained in you. As you walk out of this sanctuary, and as you remain in that home, may the grace of God be sufficient. Now that you receive the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may these blessings now abide in you today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for each one of you. We want to thank God for getting time to be with us. May the peace of God be with you and the grace of God be sufficient. From Sunday, we will be worshiping here as normal, simply because the churches are open. Welcome. And on Wednesday next week, again, welcome. We will be here physically and online. Peace be to all of you, and may the blessings of the Lord abide in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. We wish you a wonderful evening and a great week ahead. Praise team. Hide me now.